Happy New Year. 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 I am back. It is yours truly, Dr. Kenya Denise Spencer with Come Out of Masturbation. Listen, this is the clarion call. This is the I am crying aloud and sparing not in the name of Jesus, telling you all to come out of masturbation. For those that do not know me again, I'm Dr. King and Denise Spencer. I am a wife. I am a mother of two beautiful daughters. I am the owner of Kingdom Elevation University Bible College, which is enrolling now in our first day of class. is January, Tuesday, January the 9th, 2024. Happy 2024. Um, I am also an author. I do not have a book with me, but I am also an author of um, The Power of the Decree. See the manifestation of the word of God in your life. So when you decree it, the Bible says, if you decree a thing, it shall be established. We are to say what God says concerning our lives. If God didn't say it, do not come into agreement with it. If I don't care who, I don't care if your mama said it, your daddy said it, your husband said it, your wife said it. If God has not said it, do not come into agreement with it. Agreement is a powerful thing. Okay. Um, what am I? I am... I'm Kenya. Um, also, I want to, um, I like to make sure that I put a plug in here for Love Struck. Love Struck is, is kingdom, not just marriage coaching, but kingdom marriage coaching um, with JC Hutchins. She is led by the spirit of God. I would not use my influence to promote anybody or anything that I did not believe in. Um, that I didn't think that God was a part of. So just as I know that God is a part of me doing this assignment, coming on here, telling you all to come out of masturbation, I know that J.C. Hutchins' assignment is to coach marriages, to help standers, to help people that are standing for their marriage. They've gotten a word from God and um, they just need somebody to help coach them along the way. You know, if you are struggling, whether or not you should still be in a marriage, because sometimes you are in something, you are in a marriage with a destiny destroyer and God did not ordain that marriage, but the enemy set that marriage up because he wanted to destroy everything that God had planned for you before the foundation of the earth. So if you think that there's a possibility that you're in that type of marriage, Please, I will have the link in the description. Get with JC Hutchins to get you some kingdom marital coaching. Okay. Um, I'm also an intercessory prayer warrior. I want to make sure that I say that because everything I do, everything that I do from my marriage, my life, me as a mother, me hopping on here saying come out of masturbation, the school that I own, um, in any book that I write, anything that I do, I'm telling you the foundation of everything in my life is prayer. There was one time that the foundation of my life was not prayer and it was hell on wheels. And not to say that everything is perfect now, but in the midst of a storm, you know how people talk about that peace in the midst of the storm? When prayer is the foundation of your life, when your relationship with God, when you seek first the kingdom of God, and its righteousness or his righteousness, I'm telling you, everything else will be handed. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be handed over to you, okay? Um, I want to say this too. Uh, the word that God has given me for 2024 is abundance. So I saw in the spirit, the word abundance three times, abundance, abundance, abundance. So um, for those of you that have been standing on the word of God, for those of you that have a relationship with the word of God, I mean, with God, for those of you who have gotten a word from God, and if abundance lines up with, if, if you heard abundance, if you've heard greater, if you've heard more, if you've heard enlargement, if you've heard one blessing on the heels of another, if God has brought you into a study like he's done me about the four rivers, um, the one river that, um, that branched out into four rivers in the garden of Eden, um, the river of, and I might be pronouncing them wrong, the river of Pihon, or Pishon, the river of Gihon, um, the river of Euphrates, and the river of, is, is either Hydekel or Hidekel. I don't know, but I know that that word, Hydekel or Hidekel, means rapid, okay? So 
Um, you're going to have rapid, uh, and, and then the last word, um, Euphrates, was, uh, is fruitfulness. So you're going to have rapid fruitfulness. You're going to have rapid. Pihon, Pishon means increase. Gihon means a bursting forth or a, a springing up. So my prayer in the name of Jesus is that not that is not that you only come out of masturbation, get free from watching pornography, get free from perversion, but also that God would bring increase in your life. God would bring a bursting forth in your life. God will bring fruitfulness in your life rapidly as you submit yourself to his will and to his way of doing things. But there, listen, you're not just going to get the blessings of God trying to live how you want to live. You're not going to get the blessings of, you're not just going to get a, God is not, why would God increase you when you're sitting in front of the TV masturbating all day? Why would God increase you if you are watching pornography all day? You are going against God. So why would God increase someone that is going against him? Why would God increase you if you are in infidelity? Why would God increase you if you are um, in adultery or fornication? Why would God increase you so that you can wallow in your sin? So I need you to understand that if you are, if listen, let me tell you something. If you are a husband and you ain't doing right by your wife, the Bible says that God does not even hear your prayers. If you are a wife and you are not doing right by your husband, baby, God is, no. If there's any unforgiveness in your heart, God is not blessing people who are not forgiving. Because guess what? He If he blesses you, you keep that place of unforgiveness in your heart. You keep that root of bitterness. And why would it go anywhere if you live in the life you want to live? Because you'd have forgot about, you know, you've, you've, you've not forgiven, but you've also forgotten about that you need to forgive. So, the word that I'm saying, this word of abundance, this word of increase, this word of overflow, I know everybody wants it, but everybody is not entitled to it. This is not a word for you if you are practicing sin, if you are living a lifestyle. When you practice something, you have to remember, practice makes perfect, and we are not trying to be perfect in sinning, okay? All right, anyway, so I said all of that. Um, if you have not watched videos one through nine, because this is video 10, the double digit. And let me tell you, the enemy was trying to have been trying to fight me and not get me to make this video. But he does not win. OK, we have the victory through Christ Jesus. Um, so this is video number 10. I have talked about um, videos one through nine, how I was introduced to porn as a child, how um the introduction to pornography and masturbation began to change and shape and mold my life, caused me to do things um, that I should not have done to other people, caused me to introduce other people to pornography, caused me to be in all kinds of sexual immorality and promiscuity, caused me to start having sex at an early age, caused me to be in rebellion um, against God and against my parents and, you know, just all kinds of stuff, but also caused me um got pregnant at an early age um by a pimp who had 14 or 15 kids at the time that I did not know about and who now has about 40 or more children but by the grace of God like I said I did not get any sexually transmitted diseases that I well I didn't get any sexually transmitted diseases from him but I have had a sexually transmitted before I have had chlamydia before you know, as a teen, I had those things before I had that guilt of, sh I had that guilt, that shame on me, you know, um, but God in his grace and, and because of his mercy, because he knew the call that he had on my life and just, and, and even if you have gotten a sexually transmitted disease that you cannot get rid of, guess what? God is a healer. God is a restorer. God is a deliverer. God is a redeemer. So not only can he deliver and heal you from that, but he can deliver, um, redeem all of the time that the enemy ate up, all of the years of your life that you spent in masturbation, in pornography, in um, in in um, 
adultery, in fornication, because we be in fornication for a long time. If you start having sex when you are a child, I started having sex at 14 years old. When you start having sex, and I know people who've had it younger, you know, when you start having sex, um, when you start having sex at a young age, you, you listen, it's, it's, it's spirits that you, you, you invite them in. There's spirits that you tie yourself up to, that you entangle yourself up to their personalities, their characteristics that are not your own, but those characteristics and those personality traits, good or bad, you know, can come from other people. So you lying, stealing, cheating, drinking, smoking, you know, things that you had never done before, but you got entangled up. You had sex with somebody that was into that type of stuff. And guess what? The spirit that was on them is now attached itself to you. And so there are some things that once you get delivered from them or once you repent um, and come out of agreement, because I told you before, agreement is a powerful thing. Once you come out of agreement with those things, you will be able to know who you really are. Because before I was delivered and came out of pornography and masturbation, I never knew who Kenya was. I knew Kenya as a promiscuous young girl, you know, having sex, um, fornicating. Adult. And of course, I wouldn't call it no fornication and no adultery or whatever. I was having a good time. I was clubbing. I was drinking. I wasn't a smoker or anything like that. But I was doing and living according to the world standards and how I felt like I was supposed to be living. You know, got it, got into a little stripping even, but that, but that was not me because once I came into Christ and God started showing me, Kenya, this is who you are. You are an intercessory, an intercessory prayer warrior for the kingdom. You are a mouthpiece for me. You have, you are an apostle. There is an apostolic calling on your life. And I don't care how, I don't care what nobody feel about that. Cause you know, some people don't, don't believe that women and blah, 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 blah. But this is the thing. God started showing me you are a kingdom builder. So he had me to build a Bible college. I never thought that. I never saw that. God started stripping away the things that the enemy was trying to attach to me, had in my mind, had attached to my flesh, had attached to my heart. He started pulling those things. It's like, like really like that. When, you, when, when the potter has you on the wheel and he like, uh-uh, this got to come out. See this fornication, this got to come. Let me snatch this off and so you back on that fornication got to come off and, he, and he's working you hold on he's working you on the wheel working you on the wheel wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute this line let me get you off it this line got to come off oh lord that line got to that stealing got to come off that adultery got to come off that shame got to come off that betrayal got to come off and he just boom throw you back on the wheel and he working work oh wait a minute wait a minute i see the huh? This insecurity is bubbling up. Let me get you back off the wheel and take pull, jerk that insecurity off and put you back. Boom. Because you can't have all of that. You can't have all of those things going where God is trying to take you. But you will never know who you are in God. You will never know your place in the kingdom of God. You will never know if you are a hand, if you are an arm, if you are an eye, if you are a mouth. You would never know what part you play in the body until all of those things, you start stripping off those garments of filth that the enemy has strategically clothed you in. So when I say today, come out of masturbation, this is not just a call to come out of masturbation. It's a call to come out of masturbation. It's a call to come out of watching pornography. So it's a call to come out of those filthy garments. And like the prodigal son, when the prodigal son, I don't know if you know the story, but the prodigal son, when he returned home, after, be, after waddling, the last waddle was in the pig pen. He's like, wait a minute, hold on now. Hold on, I, I I I come from a kingdom. My my father is a rich man. I come from a household who has who is financially overflowing, and now I am here, laying in the hall pen eating slop. 
let me tell you something you don't see in coming to America he desired to leave the kingdom and go live in the Bronx that's not everybody's story okay you are not desiring to live beneath and if you are maybe that's something right up there that you are desiring. I know we look at that, you know, that's a love story, Hakeem, you know, going out there trying to find, you know, but baby, let me tell you something. I don't need to go out. It's not a need that I go out of the kingdom of God to experience nonsense to realize, hey, I don't want that. But hey, but that's been some of our stories where we've gone out, experienced all the nonsense, and we're like, wait a minute, I do not belong here. I do not belong sleeping with other women's husbands. I do not belong sleeping with other men's wives. I do not belong sleeping with this woman to that woman to this woman to that woman. I do not belong in this place of cheating on my wife. I do not belong in this place of cheating on my husband. I do not belong laid up on my back with, with, with a man's penis in my mouth and one behind me. I do, not, I do not belong in a place of orgies. I do not belong in a place of drugs and sex and clubbing and not having a stable family, not having kingdom businesses, not having a ministry that God wants me to, um, to be a part of, not having a kingdom lifestyle and the enemy wants to keep you in filth, in rags, in slop, in the hog pen. When God is like, listen, get up child. Come on. Let me get you up out of this hog pen. Come on home. We're going to get you out of these dirty clothes and we're going to put you in some holy garments. We're going to put you in some righteous garments. We're going to, I'm going to clothe you in Christ. And every blessing that belongs to him now belongs to you because that is your inheritance. You are a kingdom citizen, a kingdom of God citizen, not a kingdom of darkness citizen. That's not where you belong. So I'm telling you today, come out of masturbation. Stop watching pornography. That's not where you belong. You're going to lose your life. You're going to lose... <laughs> You're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your wife. You're going to lose your kids. You're going to you're going to lose your mind. You're going to lose your soul behind pornography and masturbation. God is not going to bless you coming into agreement with prostitution and sex trafficking that's recorded. God is not going to bless you when you open up the gates of your home, when you open up the portals, what does that mean? When you turn on things in your house through your television, through your cell phone, through your iPad, through your tablet, through whatever it is that you, whatever device you're watching something on, God is not going to bless you when he's, when he wants to, when he wants, he wants you to say, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. But you cannot say that out of one side of your mouth and then invite the enemy in through things that you look at on these devices like you can't like this cannot this these these things this is a portal this is a portal this this computer that i'm setting in front of record this is a portal things come through you're watching me now as you are watching me now the spirit of god that that is operating through me is you have invited him you have invited him into your home. But if you turn on filth, you invite that in. You're being entertained. The enemy is detaining you, holding you while things are entering you. So now while you're watching this, you're being detained. But it's the angels of God that are detaining you. And it's the spirit of God that is trying, that is teaching through me so that it could destroy the yokes of bondage, the cords, the chains, the fetters that the enemy, the cages that the enemy have, has had you in for years. God sends people to tell you, God sends you signs. God sends you all kinds of stuff to continue to warn you, come out, come out, come out, come out. Stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this. Stop doing that, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop doing that. Flee fornication, flee adultery. 
Guard your ear gates. Guard your eye gates. He's constantly warning. He's showing you. He's letting people getting caught up in all kinds of scandals and, and letting them be exposed around you. And you're watching their exposure, never thinking that God is only allowing you to see this because you could be next. So you're watching their exposure. You're commenting on their exposure. Not understanding that God is looking for you to learn from their foolishness and don't walk in foolishness. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. So today, in light of, um, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit because in light of, I know some people have been um, looking at the T.D. Jakes thing. And guess what? I'm not going to talk about T.D. Jakes as much as what I'm going to talk about um, a situation. Remember I said that I said I was married. Um, So I got married. I got married to a drug dealer. So my drug dealing husband, we get married at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. My ex-husband pays, we fly 50 people to Vegas, pay for their hotel rooms, pay for their flights. The only thing that the ladies in my wedding had to do was pay for their dresses and, you know, come out there with some spending money. We're out in Vegas. We're out there five days and four nights. We're out there. We are living it up. You know, the gifts that I gave to my bridesmaids was coaches and Dooney and Burke purses because that's what was in at the time. So they got coaches, but I went to Dillard's, you know, $200 per bag. And I maybe had 12 to 14 women. I forgot what my husband brought his men. Oh, my ex-husband, what, what, what he brought his men, I forgot. But what I'm saying is I am trying to show you that we had enough money to do that. And so that was the kind of lifestyle that I was living. He a drug dealer, you know. Um, I'm a drug dealer's wife. I'm not happy at all. But because of what I grew up in, pornography, perversion, masturbation, you know, it's shaping my life and it's shaping me and it's shaping what I am attracted to. But the thing about it is, even before I married this man, I didn't even know God like that. But he knew me like that. And because he knew me like that, it was, I, I remember, I didn't know it then. I didn't know it then. But God was telling me, do not marry this man. But because I listened to my family, girl, you ain't gonna find nobody to love you like he love you. Girl, that boy say he'll, and he'll do this, and he'll, he'll, y'all don't even have to go to Vegas, y'all can go to Justice of the Peace, and blah, 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 like, oh, he loved me, but I knew he did not love me, and I knew that I was not in love with him, so let me tell you what perversion will do, let me, let, let me show you what the enemy will do, I heard God say, I didn't know it was God, I heard God say, I had a, I had a something rose up on me so strong, like Kenya, don't do this. But then I also heard the people on the outside telling me, you ain't gonna never find nobody to love you like that boy love you. I don't, I feel like I don't know what love is. You know, I'd have been having sex, you know, with just random folks and all of that. I've just been living a life. See, folks don't like the truth. That's what I had been doing. So because of all of these different spirits, guess what my final authority in making my decision to go ahead and marry him? And I'm going to say it just like it was. His dick big. The sex is good. So I guess I could spend the rest of my life with him. He had not even had an orgasm. But it, it shows you the food... If, if you think that that sounds foolish, it does. It does. The fact that you would base a marriage on his penis is big and the sex is good. I, I, could, I, could, I could deal with it. Not taking anything else into account. 
letting that be the final authority and me choosing to go ahead and get married. And then getting married, spending all that money, having a child and being miserable and not, we got married in February, April. We got married in April. By November, I was trying to commit suicide. By November, I had a gun to my head. By November, when somebody came, because God sent somebody and took the gun, in November, I went from having the gun to my head to, to, to laying in a tub, a, a, my jacuzzi tub in my nice house, laying in the tub filled with hot water with a bottle of VO and a bottle of Tylenol 3s that my ex-husband had hidden because he was a pill popper. He, he sold um, cocaine, sold crack. And he was on pills and he was sipping syrup. Y'all know what that means. Lean, whatever, wherever you're from, whatever you call it. I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So they sip syrup. So I'm laying in a tub of hot water. I drink and I make sure that I count them. And as they come up, I'm forcing them back down. 15 Tylenol 3s. I'm shoving them down. I'm drinking a bottle of alcohol, shoving them down. They come up, and I would, a handful of vomit. Listen, y'all going down because I'm ready for this to be over with. So I'm doing all of this, and the enemy is 100% behind me. Kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. I got all of these spirits I've opened the door to. I'm in a marriage that I hate. But I could buy anything that I want. I could fly anywhere that I want. I could do anything that I want to do with whomever I want to do it with. But I am miserable. Not knowing that the entire time God is trying to call me out of that. He's not going to let me be okay in it. He's not going to let me be settled in it. So he's not going to let you be okay with, with watching pornography. Because it's hurting you, it's hurting your family, and it's hurting other people that you think it doesn't hurt. He's not going to be okay. He's not going to be okay with allowing you to masturbate. You think it's hurting nobody? It is hurting you. It is destroying you. It is destroying how you look at people. It is changing your perception of people. It is changing your mind. It is changing your heart. It is changing your very being. You don't even know who you are. You do not know who you are apart from these spirits that inhabit your body, that cause you to watch demonic horror movies, that cause you to watch demonic pornography, that causes you to watch and be entertained by all kinds of homosexual movies and TV shows and talk shows and this and that and that and this. I sit and I see people who watch stuff about P. Diddy and who he's sleeping with and what he's doing and all his gay activities, not realizing that the reason why you are so drawn to that, it's okay if you want to, if you want to be, you know, you want to see what's going on. You're trying to hear what's going on in the headlines. You're trying to hear what's going on in the news. But when you can't keep your eyes off of it and you can't because it is in your heart, you're being entertained. This is the thing. The very thing that you're looking at P. Diddy doing, baby, if you had the money, if you had the resources, if you keep watching what he's doing, what he did, who he's sleeping with, you want to hear all of the interviews by all of the boys and all of this and all of that, especially if you're a grown man, is something wrong with you and you just don't know it yet. I'm not talking about to somebody that's just like, what is going on? And you may watch a couple videos, but when you are indoctrinating yourself with what P. Diddy did and what this person got going on. And I mean, are you watching the same? You got to watch the same thing, the same repeat things about what T.D. Jakes did. Now, if you watch one testimony from one person versus another person, that's different. But when you're watching uh, all these different platforms where everybody's talking about, yeah, this person said he did this. And then the next person, yeah, this person said he did. And it's the same thing. It's the same person's testimony over and over again. You're just watching them from different people on YouTube um, or, or you, on Facebook. But they talking about the different, they talking, they talking about the same thing. Okay. We know P. Diddy did what he did to Cassie. 
How many times you got to watch the same thing concerning Cassie and P. Diddy? How many times you got to see how P. Diddy did it with this boy and the same boy over and over again? How many times do you have to watch? Is something not right about that? Check yourself. Check your heart. What spirit is cause is influencing you to keep feeling because you're filling yourself with that. What spirit is it that causes you to want to continue to watch nasty, filthy, profane stuff? It's an unclean, there's an unclean spirit on the inside of you. You need to get rid of the unclean spirit so you can stop being attracted to unclean things. Because if you're watching unclean things, you're going to be attracted to unclean people. And I don't care how clean your wife is. You can have the best wife on this side of glory. Guess what you're going to always be attracted to? A nasty, filthy woman with unclean spirits. You could have the best husband in the world, but because you keep filling yourself with pornography and, and, and you're fornicating and you're committing adultery, you're going to continue to be attracted to those types of things. And guess what you're doing? You are hurting the person that really loves you for people who don't care nothing about you. then you don't want to be corrected. You're sneaky. You're a liar. You can't be trusted. You're manipulative. You wear masks. You cover up. You got makeup on because you're constantly trying to cover up the person that you really are. But people can see through you. Let me tell you, man, if, if it's you that's doing all, your wife can see. Your wife can see. Woman. If this is you, your husband can see. Let me tell you, your children may not know what they see, but they can see. People can see you. You could try to dress it up. You could try to make it up. People see you. I'm telling you, if you're watching pornography, if you're watching masturbation, people, or if you're masturbating, people see you. Your coworkers see you, your family members see you. Some of them don't understand what they see, but they see you. They, they could tell by your conversations. They could tell by the fruit. The Bible says you will know the tree by the fruit that it bears. If you want to know somebody, look at the fruit. You have no desire for the Bible. You got to fight to read the Bible, but you ain't got to fight to watch the football game. You ain't got to fight to watch tele. You can sit and watch television all day. You will not give God an ounce of time. Why? Because the enemy does not want you to, because he never wants you to know who you really are in Christ. He never wants you to know that freedom. He wants you to stay, stay chained and bound. And I'm through with that. So I am, I, I get married. After marriage, I'm trying to commit suicide. I want out of this marriage. I'm listen. I'm just like Lord. I, I can't deal with this. Like this man trying to drive me crazy. I go to the mental hospital after the Lord saved my life because let me tell you. See, some people play suicide because they want some attention. Mm -mm, I wasn't playing suicide, baby. I was ready to go. I did not want to be here anymore, but God had another plan. So as I set up in this tub of hot water filled with drugs and I, and I just kept thinking, I was like, okay, they even took my gun. So if I just take all of these pills and I lay in this water, then I'm going to lay back. I'm going to pass out because of all these pills and I'm just going to drown. And it felt like that water was getting hotter and hotter. Because, see, I want to die this comfortable death. Either I want it quick or I want it comfortable. But it's like, I don't know whether the pills started making me more sensitive to feeling. But I don't know why, because they pain pills. So it looked like they should have numbed everything up. Baby, the water, like it was, like, I mean, like, it felt like it was boiling. And so I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I can't even, like, I can't even die in peace. The water is getting this hot. And the enemy right there cheered me on. Die, 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 die. Good, we need her to go. Because if she go ahead and die now, she'll never make it to this day, January 4th, 2024. 
at 2 10 p.m talking to y'all but y'all ain't gonna it's not gonna premiere until after 7 p.m to 7 p.m tonight since central standard time but he didn't want me to be and he didn't want me to be warning you to come out of masturbation and so with that being said with that being said all of a sudden um, I get I get out of the water and I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm already full of the pills. So I'm just going to lay across the bed and I'm going to die. Long story short, somebody came, called the police. You know, they, I'm here. Okay. But I go to the mental hospital. When I go to the mental hospital, I get there, they admit me. And this is around the time of Katrina. So they have to take me to Lake Charles, I believe. They took me to Lake Charles to a mental hospital. And when they take me to this mental hospital, um, the mental hospitals are packed. And so they get me there. So when I get there, the first thing I think about is, okay, I'm just going to sleep until they let me out. And when they let me out of here, I'm going to do this the right way this time. That's what's on my mind. Because I'm like, I'm not finna, I'm, I'm ready to, to be done with this. Now, this is the thing, but I never told you. At this point, I have a July to August, August, September, September, October, October, November. I have a four-month-old baby. I'm not worried, but I was like, listen, I'm just so ready to die that I have a four-month-old and I have a three-year-old. And I'm not thinking about them. All I'm thinking about is me and the enemy has me so focused on me. And all of these different spirits because of all of these different doors that I've opened through pornography, through masturbation, through all of this illicit sex, through the spirit of lust. The, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. I got rage on the inside of me. I got hatred on the inside of me. I got bitterness on the inside. I got everything from every man that I've slept with, from every boy that I've slept with, from all of these people and all of the people that they've slept with. I'm just full. It's like a cocktail full of darkness just on the inside of me. And that darkness is trying to make me take my life that day. So I would not be here today. And I was fine with it because I'm like, I, listen, I never saw this day. I never saw the Bible scholar. I never saw the, um, I never saw the Bible college owner. I never saw the author. I never saw the woman of God. I never saw, I had never saw her. I didn't know who that was. And if you would have told me that back then, I'd have been like, you are a liar. Okay. So I, long story short, I get out the, I get out the mental hospital or whatever. They got me on some kind of drugs or whatever, some symbols or, you know, trying to, that like you, you, this is postpartum depression. I don't know what it is. I know that the spirit of suicide and death was trying to make me take myself out. I know that. Okay. So, but the thing is, God had a plan. And so God was not even going to let me, he was not even going to let me mess his plan up for me. He had a plan for me and he was not going to let Kenya mess the plan up. Because it's too many people counting on you. It's too many people who I need you here for to speak into their lives. It's too many people I need you to tell them to come out of masturbation. It's too many people in your family that I need you to break some generational curses off because of if, if you don't do it, I don't have anybody else in the family that's going to do it. I need you to be the repairer of the breach. I need you to rise up and be the mouthpiece for me. I need you to stand. I need you to give me glory. I need you to testify on my behalf. I need you to tell people how good I am. I need you to tell people that they can come out of darkness into my marvelous light. I need you to teach. I need you to instruct. This was all the things that God is telling me. So listen, fast forward. I get out of that marriage, but the entire time I, fi I go file for divorce, but now I want to take the Bible. I want to pick it up and I want to use the word of God against me. And I start taking scriptures and I'm supposed, and, and I'm like, God, I'm like, am I supposed to stay in this marriage? I did make these vows. I did take these vows. And it's basically saying here that if I divorce this man, that I'm not supposed to marry anybody else unless I come back to him or he dies, something. So I'm like, like, what do I do? So I file for divorce. 
But then I start going to church and every time I'm going to church, I'm going up for special prayer. And as I'm going up for special prayer, I'm praying, Lord, I'm sorry for everything I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the marriage. I'm sorry for filing for divorce. I'm sorry for being out of your will. I'm sorry for all of this that I've been doing. And if you just make this right, if you just make my life right, I won't try to do it my way anymore. I will let you do whatever it is that you want to do with me. I give up. I surrender. I stop trying to do this my way. What do you want? Are you even real? Is there really a God? Is this music I'm listening to? Is this just some inspirational music just to hype me up? God this, God that, God this, God that. Are you there? Are you even listening to me? Who are you? Where are you? I don't want to do this by myself anymore. I can't do this by myself anymore. Why am I even here? What you got me here for? I don't have nothing. But if you show me who you are, if you show me who you are, I I I, I just I, I just I'll just let everything go. I'll let the way that I've been doing it go. And from that day that I made that declaration, a declaration I didn't even know I made, I was making because I was just so angry and I was just so upset. And I just didn't know what way to go or what to do. And I hated life and I hated me. I hated the sight of me. I hated the smell of me. I hated anything that had to do with me. And that's just what the enemy wanted. He wanted me to hate me and he wanted me to continue to spiral down. And so all of these spirits that I don't even know that are on the inside of me that are operating. I didn't even know it was like my cup of iniquity was filling up. I'd done so many things. I had hurt so many people. I've been hurt by so many people. And my life was like something, a stench, something dead in the nostrils of God. And when he could have allowed me to die in my sin, because I'm trying to take my own life. But I fast forwarded past the, before I tried to take my own life, I tried to take my life in November. In July, the enemy tried to take my life. I died that July before that November, four months early when I was having my child, my four month old, I died, I flatlined. I had a blood clot in me the size of a football. Why? Because the husband that I married the man who was selling the crack, the man who was selling the cocaine had the cocaine inside of our house. And when I asked my doctor, I said, well, how could a blood clot get in me the size of a football? Why did I have to have this emergency surgery? Why did I die? And he said, normally something like that happens because of cocaine or drugs. And I was like, well, I haven't done any drugs. But let me tell you something. My ex-husband had, had him in the house. And every time he slept with me because they were in his system, they got in my system. And so that's how the enemy will use destiny destroyers. These men were sent into my life to be a part of what would kill, what the enemy and who the enemy would use to kill me. So I died then. God said no. Four months later, I tried to take my life. God said no. And now I'm like, listen, 
It's clear I can't die. You're not going to let me die, so I just surrender. I didn't see this video going this way. I just surrender. So now in surrendering, I feel like I jumped out of the frying pan into the skillet. Is that the same thing? <laughs> because now I'm trying to give my life to Christ. And so now let me tell you how this turns into something like the T.D. Jakes thing. I go to church. And long story short, I have all this stuff going on on the inside of me. And I just want peace. I have no peace. I have no rest. So I keep going up in church for special prayer. I'm divorced now. I keep going up. Um, I file for divorce. Um, the following year, a year later, I file for divorce in, in May. This is after I try to commit suicide and all of that. This is the following year. I file for divorce in May. My divorce is final in August. I'm steady going up. I'm steady praying, you know. And um, so I'm newly divorced. I go to church. Long story short, I sit down. I have a, I have open dialogue with my pastor. And I tell him, listen, I'm very transparent. I said, listen, I said, I just come out of a marriage with a drug dealer. I said, I've been at my job stealing. I was working in, 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 forget it. I was working at Walgreens in the pharmacy. I had relatives asking me to steal pills. So I'm stealing pills. Hey, got people sipping syrup. I'm stealing syrup. I'm stealing these things because I'm looking for love in all the wrong places. And the people that are supposed to love me are asking me to steal for them. Family, family, friends. And even as I'm about to be caught, God would, God always had his hand on me because I, I should have went to federal prison. I'm not even going to go into the story about that. But so anyway, so I'm telling, I'm telling this, I'm telling my pastor, come out of this marriage with a drug dealer. I been at my job still and I'm like, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to live like this anymore. Like this is not for me, but it wasn't for me because it wasn't who I was. And so God wasn't going to let me settle in that. And God wasn't going to let me die in that. And God wasn't going to allow me to just think that Kenya, this is your life because it wasn't, that wasn't his plan. And he was going to make sure that the work that he began, I don't even know when he began it because it had to be before I knew. But he wanted me to know that the work that he began in me, he wasn't going to stop until it was finished. And it's still not finished. So he's still working. And so I'm sitting in this, I'm sitting in my pastor's office and I'm being as transparent as I could be. Not knowing, not knowing that I'm sitting across a wolf in sheep's clothing. Because everything that I'm divulging, everything that I'm saying, I didn't even know at the time, but he was taking mental note. So I come out of the world and I try to step into the church because I think, Lord, that's where it's at. I'm, I'm, I'm at church and watching people clap. I'm feeling like they're free, Lord. I just want that freedom. I want that freedom to pray. I want that freedom to praise. I want that freedom to worship. I'm just looking at them and I'm idolizing. I'm idolizing who these people are. I'm idolizing what they're doing and I just want it. Because it looks so real. And it's so different from anything that I ever knew. 
but the enemy was not through with me. But God will make all of this work together for my good. So long story short, now this pastor is married. He's married. And I'm just telling him all my business because I'm trusting. I'm trusting that he's a man of God. And I'm, and I'm also wanting to get all of this off my chest because I just feel so heavy. And I just want to feel light. So I'm telling him all of this and he basically tells me, I'm going to take you under my wing. So he tells me he's going to take me under his wing and I'm feeling honored because you got to think about it. A little girl started off pornography masturbation. There are some things that I have not said. I, I um, ended up in state's custody, so I ended up in a girl's home, in a group home. Then I go from the group home to a foster parent. And then I go from foster parent to, I mean, so it's like all of my life has been a living hell. And even when I think I'm about to step into heaven, mm -mm, it's more. Um, this pastor, after hearing my story and like I said, him saying he's going to take me under his wing and all of this. He begins to tell me later on, like this, maybe like a couple of weeks, few weeks later, you know, he's, he's kept in contact. You know, I'm still pouring out. I'm still saying everything because I'm comfortable and I don't know no better. I expect foolishness from folks out in the world. I didn't expect, expect it in the church. And so many people love this man. He could do no wrong. Prolific. That's all you would hear. He's a prolific teacher. He's this, he's that, he's, I mean, everybody just had, like T.D. Jakes, he spoke this into my life. He said this, he, da, 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 da. If it wasn't for him, da, he, he, he baptized my child. He baptized my family. He Christian, he, he performed the Christian he performed the wedding. He da, 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 da. Yeah, he did all that for y'all. But the question is, what did he do to me? What did he do to me? What did he do to me? In my vulnerability, in my trying to run after God and in my naivety, not thinking that a man of the cloth would basically do the same thing, things that the men in the world did, but he would use the name of Jesus and he would use the word of God. And so just like, you know, people were saying that they were groomed by T.D. Jakes, I was being groomed by this man. And you know the crazy part about it? The time that I was being groomed by this man, guess who I watched the most? TV. T.D. Jakes. I, I watched him. I brought all of his, every DVD he had, baby, the potter's touch, the potter's house, the potter's. But why? I, I learned later on that I was so to the point of us obsessed with the potter's touch in the potter's house and T.D. Jakes was because, first of all, all of his, all of his sermons, teachings, they play on emotion. They get you excited. They hype you up. And I would always be excited. I would always be hyped up. I would always feel like T.D. Jakes was helping me. But at the end of it, I never got a solution to my problem. 
I was never taught how to come out. I was just hyped up about this is what's happening. This was, you know, get ready, get ready, get ready. Yeah, I'm getting ready. What am I getting ready for? Because I ain't came out of this. I'm not coming out of this. But I was so taken by T.D. Jakes' ministry because the same spirit that was on this on that was on T.D. Jakes was on this man. Now it's on me. You know they say birds of a feather flock together. Sometimes you don't know that you're that type of bird. Sometimes you never signed up to be that type of bird. You just were taken by the wind. My time has been far spent. And um, on video 11, I will go more into detail. Let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. I pray, God, that you would receive glory, Lord, and the people, your people will receive the good. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that people will come out of masturbation. I pray, Father God, that people will come out of um, pornography. I pray, Father God, that souls would be saved, that people will be healed. That just like you snatch me out of the hand of the enemy, Lord, that you would snatch them to. Pray, God, that you would show them who they are in you. Father God, I pray, Lord, that as they begin to know who they are in you, God, that all of the demonic weights will be lifted. They will hunger and thirst after righteousness, God, and that they will be filled. Father, I thank you, God. Because, God, you use the foolish things to confound the wise. And if this video be a foolish thing, Use it, Lord God, to confound the wise. Use it, Lord God, to save your people. Use it, Lord God, if you just pull one woman or one man out of the hand of the enemy, Lord God, out of that darkness into your marvelous light, out of that desire to take their own lives, out of that desire, Lord God, to just run around in, in perversion, deliver them, God. I know, God, it's not your desire that any should perish. But we know, God, that many will. But I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that those who set their eyes on this video, God, those who set their hearts, Lord God, to watch it in totality, Lord, that they will be saved, sanctified, and filled with the power of your Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, God. Thank you, Father, for loving Kenya. you, God, for loving them. In Jesus' name, amen.